Greetings everyone and welcome back to Wiki Talks. Viewers, previous Monday saw Justin Trudeau opening up in his statement in the Canadian Parliament when he said that Hadeep Singh Najjar was assassinated by, he made an allegation that he was assassinated by uh, Indian agencies or Indians operating from Canadian soil and it affected so much at the global sphere as it involved so many different countries in this. It was like the hype in the, at the social media and the electronic media as well. Because previously, during the G20 summit back in India, uh, we saw something strange going on between Justin Trudeau and Prime Minister Moody. Uh, he didn't receive the proper protocol and the, another major aspect was his flight was deliberately delayed again and again on a repeatedly basis. Perhaps uh, the Indian government already didn't know that what was going to come at, uh, from the helm of Canada. And right now what we are witnessing is that uh, the update is that the Americans have come up front and a lot of media organizations including New York Times has stated that in the Five Eyes uh, the US Central Intelligence Agency actually shared intelligence of Indian diplomats there was a communication between the assassin, uh, assassin, uh, assassins as well as the Indian delegation inside Canada. We are joined here today with Brigadier Retired Bukhar. Sir, in the global sphere, when it comes to allegations, how is it that Justin Trudeau's allegation is different when it comes to what Pakistan has been saying for quite some time about India's global super terrorism? is now they're accessing in Western nations as well. I think the main difference is, the, I would say it's Western hypocrisy. And uh, now that uh, they are, their own tail has been caught uh, by fire, that there is a reaction. And uh, there are reasons for that. Pakistan has always been uh, highlighting that actually we have been victims of uh, terrorism. And there were ample proof shared in Sharm el Sheikh by, I think, Prime Minister, ex Prime Minister Yusuf Zah Gilani. Yes. Uh, and then Kulbushan Yadav, Commander Kulbushan Yadav from uh, Research and Analysis was caught red-handed. Uh, and I, I think the enterprise caused a loss of uh, almost a billion dollars to Pakistan. And publicly their national security advisor has repeatedly said that we are going to use terror as an element against Pakistan. That if you strike Mumbai type attack, you will lose Balochistan. He made that statement. Exactly. I think I'll agree uh, with that that uh, Ajit Doval had said a number of times and uh, if you look at the rhetoric especially from the RSS cadre uh, against Pakistan including uh, you know the, the late uh, uh, chief of defense staff who again uh, crashed in very mysterious circumstances uh, Bipin Rawat had once threatened Pakistan with a nuclear strike so, so I would say that uh, this was happening what was happening inside India was very clear expression of minorities there are human rights watch reports there are reports by Genocide Watch on occupied Kashmir especially that India is now at 9.5 stage if there are 10 stages. Mainly they are denying and they have crossed all the stages. Now when it comes to the West, since there is a Canadian national uh, who has been killed uh, by the state of India through the Inside Canada. Inside. So I am sure when uh, you know Justin Trudeau stands up in the parliament from the floor of the house makes this allegation, it is very very serious and as you are mentioning now. Five Eyes, I think, also collaborating evidence. So that's how it is different. Because if India is now allowed, I think even the West and rest of the world should, uh, I think, uh, understand to go scot free. Then you are really supporting statism in India. And of course, if you look at Canadian democracy, uh, there have been uh, referendums, you know, for even, I would say, separation of Francophone and Anglophone Canada, and they allowed it. So in case Khalistan referendum was going on, basically it's an opinion. And Sikh diaspora has a history in Canada. I think there were already knives out during the Khalistan referendum held in Canada. It was also held in UK, in Australia. We don't see that much same kind of reaction from the Indians when it comes to UK as well as Australia. Why this, uh, you know, constant uh, myopic attitude just towards Canada when it comes to Khalistan movement? I think it's the Canadian, it's the Sikh power in Canada. I think mainly. And uh, if I am not mistaken, uh, these guys, you know, uh, like Hadeep Singh, Najjar, Pewal Singh, uh, they may be from the next generation uh, which was born after or around 1984, mm -hmm. whose parents were killed and some of them fled to, you know, North America, especially Canada. 
and uh, Canada welcomed them. And then they, and they worked very hard. They contributed immensely hmm. in science and technology and business and politics. Now, if you look at the coalition with Trudeau, it's, it's, uh, it's led by a very strong Sikh leader. Mm -hmm. And he's projected to be maybe the next prime minister. So, so that's why I think the political power of Sikhs in Canada and why they are so comfortable. Uh, and it then starts resonating in India because, you know, there are blood relations, the Indian Punjab. So, I think the specter of Khalistan and another Russian blue star. Uh, so, India sees it, I think, uh, very, very seriously. That's why the reaction. Hmm. And uh, when it comes to the five eyes, what are your opinion concerning it? A lot of people are confused when it comes to five eyes just being restricted to the Commonwealth nations, including the U.S., then there are the seven eyes and the nine eyes and a lot of eyes. Yeah, so, well, I think five eyes is uh, uh, a lot of people at times, you know, get bewildered by this uh, acronym. Uh, mainly these are Anglophone countries hmm. uh, and those people who origin was in, uh, in let's say, Britannia. So you have US, Canada, uh, UK, Australia and New Zealand hmm. and they clapped. And then of course there are allies of five eyes, so you become seven eyes and nine eyes. Now I'll just briefly go into... Uh, details because I think that's important. That five eyes uh, working for joint sharing of intelligence is not just five intelligence agencies. There are 21 prime intelligence agencies involved. So it means one, they have global network, right from Pacific up to the Atlantic, and uh, definitely in uh, you know South Asia uh, and uh, Europe. So it means that uh, they are basically uh, looking at everything what is happening. I just highlight the important one like for Australia. Australian Secret Intelligence Service is there. They have five uh, and then Australian Signal Directed. So mainly if you look at, initially it was basically eavesdropping a signal coordination for picking up communication hostile to, that's the interest of the West uh, or these five countries. For Canada, it is the CSC. CS, again, there are four, but important one are Communication Security Establishment and Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Uh, for New Zealand, it is the DDIS, Directorate of Defense Intelligence and Security. GCSC, which is Government Communication Skills. So, I think emphasis is on security. Now, when come to UK, uh, all the, I think, the big ones, like uh, DI, Directorate of uh, Defense Intelligence, GCHQ, which coordinates the entire, I think, the Government Communication Headquarters, MI5, MI6. So, mm -hmm. so, so, and if you look at the United States, all the top five, CIA, DIA, FBI, NGA, and National Security Agency. So, all told, the evidence, I think, piled up by five eyes is not a joke. If India thinks that they can get away with it, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And uh, maybe, as they say about the ISI in Pakistan, that it can listen to pillow talk uh, of Narendra Modi also. So if we have that capability, I'm sure five eyes has a lot. Now, uh, back to my previous question concerning the U.S. We saw the G20, uh, you know, summit takes place in New Delhi. Everything going up, warm things, India, Middle East, you know, Europe corridor being announced, huge celebrations and alternate to what China is thinking about globally. The, this is from the Five Eyes perspective that New York Times is saying that it is actually US who has shared the message communicated between the Indian diplomats and the assassins. So isn't it very quite strange that on one hand, US is doing it's U U.S. things in India, while it's also conveniently saying, yeah, we were doing bad things in Canada. Yeah, I think there are two things about it. One was the timing. G20, I don't think so the Western bloc needed to spoil it because uh, Xi Jinping was not coming. Mm -hmm. President Putin was not coming. The Mexican president was not coming. So already, I would say it was, uh, I think the, the water was muddy. And didn't want to embarrass Modi, the Asia pivot and Macro man and in 46, uh, 56 in chess. So I think they pampered, knowing fully well that the announcement by Trudeau will be, public announcement will be between G20 and UNGA. Mm -hmm. And I think this news coming just before UNGA is significant. You know what is being talked in New York? There are 154 heads of states or governments there. Mm -hmm. So this became the leading news. Yeah. I don't know how uh, Indian delegation, uh, you know, uh, faced these people. That here is a state which is sponsoring terrorism. I think the second point is, as I mentioned, that now Indian state sponsored terrorism is basically burning the tails of the West. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have uh, 
Ministry of External Affairs involved because you, uh, Indian Embassy or High Commission Canada is, uh, let's say, helping the terrorists. Mm -hmm. So it means Jay Shankar is involved. Mm -hmm. If it's being done by either the NIA mm -hmm. or, uh, let's say, uh, Research and Analysis Wing, both controlled by Ajit Doval. So NSA's office is involved mm -hmm. and uh, Ajit Doval is involved. So if these two Johnnies are involved, so Modi is involved because he's the one who's calling the shots, who gives the policy direction. It means it is a state-sponsored assassination mm -hmm. uh, which is taking place on Canadian soil. And in case I think this is not stopped, that is more, I think, important. Could this be equivalent to assassination of Trotsky back in Mexico? It yeah, more like to do with yeah, that. more like to do that. But I think in case of um, in case of the six, it is slightly different because uh, because six uh, diaspora. Uh, in, uh, in, in North America, especially Canada is very strong, as I mentioned, politically, in businesses, even in sports and culture. Uh, one of the top, I think, uh, um, uh, some of the top uh, rappers in Canada are mm. sick boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's also pricking, uh, you know, India. So India basically thought that they could do it inside mm -hmm. the, uh, and unleash the RSS desk course, so they could probably venture. I think somebody mentioned that maybe they, I think they've tried to punch above their weight. And, and uh, the news is that India has actually banned those rap channels back home. Exactly. Concerning Sikh identity, anything to do with that, uh, uh, anything to be related with human rights concerning, to, uh, concerning the Sikhs, or anything related to Khalistan in perspective. I think uh, how Khalistan movement bounced back was during farmers' protest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a piece also, and maybe I think we'll put the link uh, in, the, in this video, uh, of uh, the how basically Sikh folklore affected the farmers' protests. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, basically uh, one was uh, uh, singer Bajwa, then you had uh, uh, Siddhu Musewala, mm -hmm. he I think also performed, and then he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then there were rappers from uh, even Pakistan, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and Canada. So so they came up to help the farmers, and there was uh, you know East West. Sharda Punjab, Landa Punjab, camaraderie displayed, so mm. I think it put a lot of pressure. Now, some of the rappers have been, uh, and there, I think if you look at their following, uh, it is in millions on social media. So, uh, one of their top rappers, a very young boy, the only, I think, fault was that in one of his songs, there is an Indian uh, map without occupied Kashmir and actually Indian Punjab, so it's, it's uh, I would say, trimmed India. And uh, just to punish him for that, and I'm sure there's going to be a reaction by the Sikh community. So, so all told, I think uh, I would say India is in a very bad position, but reacting, I think, uh, uh, very, very absurdly. Yeah, when it comes to reactions, we have seen Indian media previously reporting, and even today on different electronic media outlets, uh, a lot of analysts were actually trying to use the nuke. Yes. against the Canadians in retrospect to what is going on and we also saw one of their major defense analysts, Major Gaurav Arya, threatening the same uh, Khalistan supporters back inside Canada. So, why do you think India currently is so confident? Are they facing the heat or any kind of pressure concerning this or they are awaiting for some big, something big to happen coming up from the West? I think Indian, uh, although Indian uh, Godi media, the mainstream is now almost occupied by uh, the RSS, corporate India, like Adani has bought you know, most of the shares. NDTV used to be, you know, I would say semi-liberal. Uh, like we had the print magazine, the wire, and some of the leftist channels uh, who basically support a secular India. But they have been suppressed. So I think Indian media has responded uh, very, very nice. We thought maybe they'll they'll go into an advisory mode and tell Mr. Modi and RSS to you know take a back seat and mm. just have a glass of water and think about it. So they went you know all guns blazing. They're not. Uh, they're not. Uh, I would say denying it. They're saying yeah maybe we are involved. So what? Yeah. So, so that's a kind of arrogance. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like Goravariya actually has been threatening Sidhu Musewala. He was assassinated and then he claimed. You know, there is a guy like Lawrence Bishnoi, mm -hmm. he's a thug you now, who I think is involved in some of the murders. And Gaurav Arya claims that he has now international, uh, let's say, uh, assassination gang. And he can just issue a chit from the jail and here, uh, lo and behold, uh, you know, people will be killed. Uh, and he claims it. So, I, I'm sure uh, the ex of Twitter is listening to this mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. that uh, such guys should be, I think, taken to task. Then comes the threat. 
as you mentioned, uh, why I would say an intellectual, Bhakti intellectual, that we will bomb, uh, you know, Canada with nuclear weapon. Just imagine the absurdity. Mm -hmm. Bipman Rawat did it. And uh, on ground situation is that in case India had the option of, let's say, at least nuclear posting, they should have done it against the Chinese. When the Chinese took 2,500 square kilometers in Ladakh in 2020, or when Pakistan shot down two of their aircraft. Mm -hmm. I mean, and in nuclear posting, they just, you know, uh, India just backed out. So that's a kind of, I would say, will with military uh, and the political leadership. But I would say it's more like Gider Bhapki, as we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think it also raises the question that if it is so irresponsible, Indian leadership, that, you know, on drop of a hat, you start threatening countries with nuclear weapons, I think the nuclear war talk should better, you know, look into who controls nuclear arsenal in India. Yeah, exactly. And uh, when it comes to Pakistan, now when, you know, there is this huge uh, counterbalance between India, the East, as well as West, now things are looking not too good for India at the moment. What should be our approach in handling this situation? I think there are a lot of commentators. Uh, I, yesterday I was in a program uh, and they were very senior ambassadors and so they had different views. Uh, one was to exploit the situation. I'd go with that because Moody or RSS or Indian, even Jay Shankar, look at the way, you know, he at the time made fun of uh, mm. you know, Pakistan's mm. economic situation. Even it's a small incident related to minorities, then make, you know, a bombshell out of it. That one is uh, we should go for fully full exploitation in information domain and diplomatically. Okay. Mm. Because now you can resonate and prove that what we were telling you is proven now. So it's basically state sponsors terrorism. And we are daily facing it. The other I think is uh, how do you communicate with 1.4 billion Indians? Uh, because uh, there's a huge debate in India now uh, between so-called I would say the secular uh, and the Sanatani, you know, Hindus of the RSS. Like from, if you look at India's three corners, there is a, a physical, intellectual and political pushback now coming on Moody, on the cow belt. Northeast, you have seen Manipur burning and uh, there is a Christian uh, Hindu divide in the tribes. So there is a pushback because of, there is a backlash. Then in the south, I think where uh, you look at in terms of education and development, South is doing very well. And they are definitely uh, of a different, I would say, thinking and stock. Like M.K. Stalin, Tamil Nadu's chief minister's son, uh, very clearly said that we don't need this Sanatan Dharma because you are going to destroy India. So it means that you have, uh, you know, an audience in the South India uh, or the Dravidian audience or Keralites or uh, people in Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, which probably are going to listen. And then comes the third corner is the northwest occupied Kashmir and then comes Indian Punjab and maybe western Delhi where I think Pakistan message will resonate. So to our Sikh brothers who are uh, let's say fighting for their independence definitely. Uh, I think we should be supporting them fully uh, in the information domain and Baknema. So, so we should I would say also highlight that how RSS which suppressed the dissenting voices within India. Like if you look at the murders, assassination by some, you know, like Abhinav Bharat mm -hmm. and uh, these organizations. Uh, Gauri Lankesh was murdered by RSS. Mm -hmm. Then you had uh, Professor Dhabulkar Pansare, Professor Kulburgi. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of them. And uh, the one who was involved in, uh, let's say, linked with the murder, Sadhvi Prigya Thakar is sitting in Lok Sabha. Mm -hmm. And also the Bajrang Dal, uh, you know, one of the leader, I think, was sitting in the parliament today. Uh, and, and, and a BJP parliamentarian was abusing a Muslim uh, MP saying, I think, very, very derogatory words. Hmm. Oh, Mullah, and I, I can't even yeah. repeat it. Mm -hmm. uh, Atangwadi and Ugarwadi and all that. So, so I think that's the audience. And I feel that other than the cow bell, you will find the audience. So, for RSS and uh, BJP and Woody, I think we should have an aggressive posture, at least in the information domain. And for the rest of India, definitely a message of camaraderie, a message of sympathy that definitely nobody wants Sanatan Dharma. So I think I, I feel that is my you know point that we could actually look at it. There should be a regular debate because things are now going to come up. As you mentioned, uh, I think five eyes you start you know listening to 
watches coming from Australia, New Zealand. There will be leaks also to put pressure. Main thing is that India has to be made accountable. Mm -hmm. I think that's the bottom line. Thank you so much for joining us, Bhido Kaak. We have a question for you as well. Um, when it comes to the West, should it act like Neville Chamberlain, keep on appeasing and await the reincarnation of Hitler back uh, in South Asia? Or should it act like Churchill and, you know, get rid of this fuss already? Thank you so much for joining us. We will meet you in the next video. Bye.